Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. So, good. <laughs> One of those once-in-a-lifetime stories from the fire department. I unfortunately was not part of it, but since it happened partially with my department, I have been made aware of such stories. Is it, is it, is it related to the eclipse? It is not related to the eclipse. Oh, it is not related to sunscreen in the eye, nothing like that. Uh, completely, like, random occurrence. So, okay. there was a fire alarm. Excuse me, a box alarm went out. So it was a quote-unquote a full-fledged fire. Somebody called in something that made people think that there was a, a legit fire going on. So they put out a box alarm. And a bunch of units responded, including the unit from my station. Even though we were fifth due, so it means we were last due on the uh, on the line. But whatever, we were we were still there. So it was an apartment building, and I guess what happened was uh, an old guy lives there, and his family was visiting for the weekend. And I don't exactly know how it all happened, but the old guy was by himself at the house, cooking food, and left in the middle of cooking food. <laughs> this okay. happens way more often than you'd actually want what do you to mean he left though he, what does that mean yeah he, he left the premises he was no longer there and food was still cooking but like was he like running next door to get like some flour because he needed don't or, like, know i think there was a lot of left left I think there was dementia involved and he left left okay um i have okay. gone to a fire one of the first fires quote unquote fires it wasn't a real fire that i ever went to we went to this uh this house for smoke. The neighbor called because smoke was coming out of the apartment next door. And so we get there, we walk inside, and literally I see an empty pot of water on the stove with the pilot. Wait, wait, the, you said, did you say empty pot of water? Well, it was an empty pot, so it was an empty okay, pot. Okay, I was about to say, it, it, aren't all pots that are empty now, in, by your definition, an empty pot of water? Yes, they all have water in them. <laughs> all empty pots have water in them. It's just the way Well, you is. said an empty pot of water. Either it's got water or it's empty. Yeah, so it was an empty pot. Okay. Um, Wait, of, of water. <laughs> no, so there was water in the pot. It was an empty pot. But yes, it turns out there was water in the pot at one point. The guy started boiling water, realized he didn't have what he needed to cook, like mac and cheese or something, and he went to the store. And he got delayed at the store, and all the water evaporated, so this pot was just smoking and on fire because he left it there. Uh, but that was not a dementia thing. Like, the guy came home in the middle of the fire department being there, wondering what the hell was happening, why was the stove on, and this pot was empty. And he told us, and he's an idiot, but, you know, so that happens. But this guy had dementia, I guess, and had started cooking and left. So there was apparently food cooking on the stove. Like I said, it's not uncommon for something like that to happen, and it's even less uncommon for a fire to go out when it's really food on the stove. Just smoking, and the neighbor calls because they see all the smoke. So I guess the more interesting thing about this story, though, is the first do firefighters get to the residence, knock on the door, nobody answers, so they pry the door open to be greeted by a dog. Did they shoot it? proceeds to bite the firefighter when they make entrance <laughs> into the Well, that's what dogs are supposed to do, to be fair. And then you know what the dog did? The pee on him? Turned around and ran away <laughs> and jumped <laughs> off the eighth story balcony. I am not kidding you. Did he die? Yes. Holy shit. Wait, are you sure that's what really happened? You sure the firefighter didn't just like fling him off his leg? So off, off I was balcony. I wasn't there, so I guess that is possible. I can't imagine that the firefighter threw a dog off the balcony when the balcony would have been on the other end of the house than where he made entrance to. Right. But that is one of those stories that I don't think I have ever fathomed in my life would be that you'd go to a fire call and end with a dog committing suicide off the balcony. Well, yeah, no, that's that's pretty uncommon. So how do you, is there paperwork involved in this sort of I, thing? So luckily our unit, even though I wasn't my night, it was the night before. And the reason there is that I was there yesterday and it was on Sunday. And I asked like, oh, so what was the fire over at blah, blah, blah building? And everybody goes, let me tell you a story. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> like, what is this? What is this going to be about right now? Um, 
Yeah, so I don't know if there's paperwork yet to fill out. I guess there was a big fight with Animal Control because Animal Control like refused to take the dog, the car, the uh, dead dog, and the firefighters were arguing with them that like, isn't that what their job is? Is to take like the dog? What do you do with it? Do you just leave it there then? Like, what what else do you do with the dog that just jumped off the the out of the back balcony of the apartment complex? Did they go check on the dog? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it was dead. Somebody went down to look, and it was it, no longer living. Wow. What kind of dog? Uh, I guess somebody says it might have been like a, a pit bull or a Rottweiler. So I kind of say good riddance, but that's me. Especially wow. Lovers. Wow. Well, I would say I've known ways. So pit bulls and Rottweilers are. I've met some that are very friendly and very nice. But I've also met way too many of my friends, my high school friends that decided to have babies and my early college friends that had babies. All of them decided to get a dog. I can't say all of them, but many of them got animals and decided that they wanted a dog that could protect their family. So they got Rottweilers and Pitbulls with babies. And I think that's just a terrible freaking idea. Why? Because they are they have instincts. They are known to be dogs that no matter how well you train them. They still have instincts that can kick in because they are raised that, or they're not raised. That, that's the type of dogs that they are. They're more aggressive, like beasts. People know that golden retrievers and labs and stuff are the ones that are like the more docile animals. It's because of like the genes and the heritage within the dog. And I've seen too many stories and been in the fire department to hear too many times and been in the ER too many times to hear about like Rottweilers and pit bulls eating like are biting humans biting kids and i just don't think it's something that you should ever have when you have a child no matter how well you think you can train it they still have instincts and there's no reason to take that risk i, I mean i guess you you're better you're better educated on the matter than i am because I, I don't mean i never worked at ER or fire department i just assumed that all dog i thought that all dogs were more of a like a nature versus nurture sort of thing and uh like, if they're raised right, they're not going to fuck with anyone. See, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people in the comments who completely agree with you. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people in the comments who completely agree with me. Because there's a... I don't know. It's just one of those things. I, I look at risk versus reward scenario scenarios. And when I say that I want all, you know, pit bulls and rottweilers, good riddance, I don't really mean that. If you're a grown adult and want to have, like, a pit bull or a rottweiler, go for it. And, like I said, I have met... Pitbulls and Rottweilers were some of the sweetest dogs ever. But I would say that is the exception to the rule. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a I don't have a strong opinion of this. I don't, I don't like dogs anyway, so I don't like any dogs. I don't care what they are. See, I love I love dog dogs here. and I love we I had a Siberian Husky and the last name Malmute when I was growing up. And I will tell you, those have the same like a similar type of stigma. Not nearly as bad as the the pit bulls and the rottweilers and one of them was the greatest dog ever that would like would, the friendliest most kindest creature in the world and the other one bit myself and the neighbor kid and ended up getting put down well happy story yeah mm -hmm. let's say Chris. they didn't jump off a balcony i mean yeah, that would have been easier uh oh i just tipped over the uh Oh, it's back. I accidentally tipped over the, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The conveyor belt up here at the sheep. And I drove back forward and it just righted itself back there. How many sheep do we have? Do we need to sell some of these guys? Uh, well, we had 101 before we sped up time. I have, oop, hit tab. Let me hit tab. Um,. How many do we have? 103. 103 sheep. And how much do they sell for? Uh, you, like 1,600 or something like that each. Oh. It's not a lot. They're not that much. No. I'm trying to think what we can do. Somebody also said I can put this. Oops. God dang it. Um, that we can put this hay. Like we can feed the sheep hay. That we have I up here already. That. So I'm gonna like just try to stuff it in there and see what happens. 
We're gonna use these things as bail spikes. Let's see what happens. I guess I don't understand the purpose of the bail spikes when. Uh, nope, that surely didn't work. Or we have to wait till the grass <laughs> is gone. I don't think it. I because we tried sticking that in there before, and it doesn't do anything. Maybe it's the difference with the hay versus the straw, and all that stuff that we never really figured out fully. Yeah, I think like you can turn grass into hay or straw. One, one, whatever, whatever that is not. I can't imagine why we turn grass into anything except silage. Uh, well, if you like money, then you, there isn't a reason. <laughs> it's like a little checklist. Do you like money? Yes or no? Yes, step one. Silage. Step or no, step two. Leave the game. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know what you do in this game if you don't like money, because you need the money. Or you can just play for eight hours a day. Right. Well, there's that option. So people like this game enough to want to play it eight hours a day. I mean, it's kind of relaxing in a way, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I could play this game for a lot of hours. It's, it's relaxing in like a repetitive way. It reminds me of... I wish there should be more ways to like level up, because that would remind me of one of those Facebook games. Right. Oh, I can't even hire this guy right now. Kind of reminds me of like, um, like if you had like a little hell of sand on your desk and a little tiny rake. A Zen garden? Yeah. This is a virtual Zen garden. It is. I wish we could make cool shapes in this stuff that stuck around. Like swastikas? Yeah, exactly like swastikas. <laughs> That's odd you read my mind. <laughs> oh, God. Not really. Oh. <sighs> Have you ever been to a uh, a wedding from another culture? I have it. I feel like, I feel like that would be fun, though. Dude, I went to an Ethiopian wedding this weekend, and it was amazing because it was so different than anything I was used to. <laughs> it was, they had, when we find so the invitation said to be there at six thirty for the wedding, but there was no RSVP. It was the banquet hall, or it just said, like, well, you are welcome to come join the celebration of, you know, our daughter, it was sent from the parents, you know, our daughter and son's marriage. Not the same daughter and son, not the same parents, you know, both sets of parents together. So, it wasn't a brother and sister marrying each other, just, you know, getting that point across. But, okay. <laughs> they, <laughs> they said, to, you know, to be there at 6.30, and please be on time. But that's all it said, it didn't say if there was, like, food it didn't say if it was just the reception it didn't say if it was a wedding it didn't say anything except just be there and there was no rsvp there was no expectation to rsvp unless you were supposed to tell them in some way if you weren't going to come and so i was like okay when we got there at 6 30 basically on the nose because i was like pushing julie out the door because she loves to be late for everything god i hate that they didn't start anything until nine what the fuck? Uh, or excuse me, eight. They started at eight for uh, the ceremony, I guess it was. But you basically went in this place and you sat down. Whoops. You sat down at a table like it was a reception and the bar was open. And it was an open oh. bar, which didn't say anything on the invitation. So you had like free access to like alcohol. Well, but, at least you got there for that. Oh, I mean, yeah, we got there for the alcohol. We were just bullshitting with the people at our table because it was all the people I work with because it was a work wedding. But we're waiting. Going, oh, like, a work wedding. It well, sounds like y'all were it's, you know, it. it's, it's a work wedding. I got paid for the, the wedding. Oh, I'm bathing in the... Uh, uh, and <laughs> so we're sitting there kind of going like, I'm really hungry, you know. When is this food going to come out? we seen the food. We saw that there's a back room that has food set up in it. So we know food's going to be happening at some point. But like, how do we get to this food? And are we here for a wedding? Or is this just the reception? Did they get married before? Like, we have no idea. And there's a DJ who, in between all the songs, was talking, but he was literally speaking in, like, whatever language it is that they speak in Ethiopia. I'm not sure. Is it just Ethiopian? I don't know, like, what the language is over there. But he was speaking non-English. 
And I was like, I don't have any idea. Like, and I thought there'd be like an English translation afterwards, but there was not. So I was just like, okay, just kind of hanging out and hoping I understand like what the next <laughs> steps are with this thing. And finally they come out, they announce, they start announcing the bride and groom, which they did do in like the other language and English. And they announced them, they walk in and the bridesmaids all get together and like they dance together, but just kind of like jumping in a circle. And then they surround the bride and groom and they're just on the dance floor, like jumping in a big circle around them. And then all these people start rushing in from the sides and just like form a second circle around them all. And I was like, this is like amazing and crazy and off the wall like nobody's really dancing they're all just like jumping and having a good time but they're reciting some song that's playing from their like native language that i have no idea what they're saying at all and then it just stops and they start dismissing people to go get food (laughs) and in the back of the when we finally get to go get food in the back of the food line there's like the buffet line it's it was all standard ethiopian food with like the the non-bread um, like thing that you pick up, like the you've eaten Ethiopian before, yeah. So it, it's that type of platter. Um, but it was mainly meat, very little vegetables, which made me very happy because I like the Ethiopian meat. But in the one corner, there was like an animal carcass, like it was a butcher shop that a guy was Sweet. just cutting meat off of, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I was looking around, and he was just putting it on a tray and on the plate in front of him. And it was a station that people just kept, like, bypassing. And then I saw somebody stop at it and just take some of the raw meat. And I was, like, talking to the guy at the thing. And I was, like, so, like, what are you supposed to, like, what are you supposed to do here? Is this, like, to eat right now? And he was looking at me like I was crazy because I was asking him how the station worked. (laughs) They serve just straight up chunks of raw meat with then these spices over in the corner you're supposed to put on them. Have you, Did they cook it? No. What? You eat the meat completely raw and just drizzle these spices on it. And that was what that station wow. was. And most of the people that were even like the, the people there from like the, the, the brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and all the people from that side of the family were ignoring it and not eating Well, yeah, because it. it's raw meat. I took the plunge. Did you? But the guy the guy thought I was crazy for asking him. Like, he thought I should know how it works. And mind you, there was four total white people at this whole reception. So it was like 250 people. There was like four people that we could count that were white people. So I stand out. Like, as somebody who does not understand this culture and this, you know, th- this idea, I was really shocked that he was really confused that i was asking him how it worked right you think that would be a common uh, yeah i would think you got a carcass here so some uh (laughs) some ladies were standing like what was the carcass i don't even know i don't don't know what kind of food it was was some type of beef whether it was like a veal or a full uh, like a full-grown cow or what i have no idea it was just like right it looked like a butcher shop like it was immaculately like cut and then the guy started asking me if i wanted more fat or less fat and i was like i have no idea like what what am i supposed to have in this but luckily there was some ladies that had just come through the line that were like oh no no you take the meat and you go over here to this station and put some spices on it and there were some of the ones that were eating it as well so i mean i guess i've had beef carpaccio and stuff right so that's the same thing how thinly sliced was it was it like did he give you like a fucking ribeye or like it was chunks it was not thinly sliced it was a chunk it was like a square chunk that was probably like an uh, inch that's gotta diameter. be chewy was it chewy uh it wasn't that chewy it was a little bit chewy and i will tell you it really didn't taste like anything except the spices that i put on it because it's a lot of hot spices like a, a hot powdery stuff i don't uh, know what it all was because the guy wasn't like willing to tell me what it was and at least those ladies were willing to tell me no you take the meat you put some of this stuff on it and you eat it like that's how this part of it works um so i don't know what they were but it was relatively it was quite spicy but it was It didn't really have much of a flavor to it, and I ate one of the chunk of the two chunks that he gave me, and then I graciously did not eat the other one because (laughs) I was like, okay, now I've tried it. I feel good. I tried it. It didn't taste like much. (laughs) I don't know if this is worth the health risk that might be posed with eating said. I mean, I'm also surprised they got away with doing it at a banquet hall. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can eat raw beef, right? I mean, that's definitely a thing, so I guess... I guess it was safe 
for them to be doing that. It is pretty wild, though. And uh, it almost feels like... Can you I don't know. Beef, though? Is beef carpaccio... I don't know if I've ever had it. Is it, like, at least cooked in lime juice, like ceviche? Yeah. Yeah, basically. So isn't that, like, Sometimes. a cooking method? It's supposed to... The, the acid's supposed to kill bacteria, yeah. Um, but... Oh, are I, we full? I oh, we're full up on sunflowers, I think. Oh, shit. But I do believe you yeah. can eat raw beef without much health risk. I don't think there's a lot of health risk. You know, there's no... Um... Oh, I guess that's why he wouldn't... Ha, huh. okay. Hmm. Yeah. I thought the corn wasn't grown over there, because we wouldn't... The worker would not hire. But no, I guess it wasn't that it was... still got some sunflowers in it. I got gotcha. you. There we go. Yeah, I have never been to a wedding like that in my life, and it was like, it was amazing and also sad because we had to leave shortly after dinner because it was so late. We had to get back and take care of the baby because Julia's parents weren't planning on being up until like, you know, two o'clock in the morning. So by the time we got done going through the food line and eating food, it was like, it was close to 11 when we left. Wow. And nothing had happened yet except for a couple of these dances where the bridesmaids got up around the bride and groom and like jumped around in a big circle we joined in the big outer circle at one point when everybody started coming out of their chairs and jumping around in the outer circle we went and jumped in it because why not we were there let's let's go enjoy <laughs> yeah but i definitely well, was, Rome, I, guess. <laughs> I was so unsure of what was happening that i it, it's kind so of so how fun. do you know these people uh, I, I work with them but do you ever talk to them uh, yeah, she's uh, one of my direct reports. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so... So, like, I, I don't know. I guess the reason I was asking that question is, like, I feel like you could have gone to her and be like, so what's up with the what's up with the dead cow? Oh, she... We I only got to talk to her as we were leaving because that was the first time she was getting out of doing bridal stuff. And then uh, uh, yeah. shortly after I left, I, they my my team sent me pictures of... She had come over and gotten pictures with everybody at the table. Um, so we had waved at her out and stuff up at, at, up at the bridal, like, you know thing up at the at the front but i happened to catch her when she was leaving because they were they went to the bathroom to i guess change out of some of the you know typical you know change to your party outfit after you get married type of deal but like i said it was right. close to 11 at this point um it was probably like 10 30 so i don't know how long they had the hall till i guess most weddings are usually only have the hall until like 11 so maybe they had it longer i don't know it was kind of funny because I've only been to two weddings out here in D.C. area, and both of them happened to be at the exact same place, and they were completely different customers. Well, I bet so. Yeah, it was quite, it was quite entertaining. I would highly suggest, though, it was definitely a lot of fun. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't really talk to any random people. I just talked to my team. Yeah. And which is kind of unfortunate. There was this older couple that was sitting at the same table that we were at at first, and it wasn't assigned seats. And as our team started to pile in into all these seats that somebody who got there early saved for everybody to make sure that we could all sit together, the older couple kind of ventured off and went to a different table. So. That's too bad. Yeah. So you know, at, at my wedding reception, we had a pig, but he was cooked. I mean, you could have <laughs> served some of it raw. I don't think, well, no, I think pork's more of a risk. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now, like, I guess someone, like, if, like, I, I guess to some, even some Americans, that would be weird, like, just to have a, a whole roast pig here. Uh, I don't know. I think a pig's pretty standard. I can't say, not, it's not standard as in you see it all the time, but it is, isn't it like, I mean, people have seen The Simpsons. One of the funniest episodes is when, you know, the pig goes... You know, flying down the dam and Homer's chasing it going, it's just a little slimy, it's still good, it's still good. I don't know about this. Oh, you should watch The Simpsons. It was great. I have watched some Simpsons. <laughs> and it gets stuck in the dam and he's like, it's just a little stuck, it's still good, it's still good. And then the dam backs up and the pig goes flying like out of it like a pressure gun. And he's like, it's just a little airborne, it's still good, it's still good. Okay. <laughs> You'd have to see it. It's just all about it. It's yeah, still good. Right. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You ever watch that show? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen the probably all of them unless this new, unless they had a new season. Because yeah, I watched... Yeah, I don't, know if, I don't know if I've seen... Yeah. Yeah, I watched the latest ones that I watched were very strange, for sure. It's taken a different direction. But, yes, I like <laughs> It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Reminds me of the Rome ham. 
<laughs> Danny DeVito like makes that show, and it's so funny because he wasn't even in there till the second season because he loved the concept and told them he would make it great. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, that's pretty wild. He's a good actor. Oh yeah. Do you ever watch Archer? I don't. Is he in that? No, but I was. It's another okay. show that kind of got gained popularity around the same time as It's Always Sunny did. Completely different, obviously. Archer's a cartoon, and you know. Asian oh, I was thinking of uh, uh, something else. I know what Archer is now that you said that. I've, 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 that? I tried to. I tried to watch it. I couldn't get into it. Oh, I think it's hilarious. Archer's great. But I also really like Ashton Benjamin. I think he's just like a phenomenal voice actor. Yeah, I think the comedy would, would, would is my type. I just, I don't know. For some reason, I never could get beyond the first couple episodes. You should still watch Wrecked, I'm telling you. Yeah. It's on my list. <laughs> sure it is. Uh, so now we have to wait uh, for three hours for this field over here to get... Uh, is it in the starting phases of it doing its thing? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess we speed up time while it continues to get plowed, honestly. Yeah, I mean, in, th in theory, it won't change anything, right? Right. As long as we speed up time until it's fully grown, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Well, we still need to get... Don't speed it up yet, though. We got All yeah, these fields no. over here aren't done. Why can't I get in the flower? Or why can't I get in the planter over here? Are you in, like, I'm, all the I'm planters? I'm in the planter. <laughs> I'm in don't the one that's about to start planting corn. Yeah, we do. Where'd the other one go? I don't think it's hooked up to a tractor. Oh. But I'm starting the corn one right now. Uh, I don't see you. It's planting corn. Oh, though. I see. I okay, you're behind the tree. I got you. <laughs> I was like, I'm watching that field. That's what I was trying to do. I don't know where it went. Oh, with this guy all lined up and ready for the next next run. You no, know we should do. Pay back what? our loan. How much more we got to do? I want to say eighty grand. Uh, or the finances tab. Uh, eighty-three or eighty-five thousand dollars. Oh yeah. You want to do it? Be debt-free. Debt-free. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> it feels so good. Uh, that was the cheapest loan I ever had, though. No shit, right? <laughs> I wish I could borrow three hundred thousand dollars and pay a thousand dollars. I guess it was a thousand dollars a day. But in real life, you can't grow corns or fields of corn in a day either. Right. So you have to give it some realism aspect going on. All right, this guy's still got a little ways to go, huh? but you've started. You've started the behemoth. Yeah, it's gonna. Are you in it? Yes. Hold on, I can get out. I started up there at the top, so maybe it'll do all of it this time. Who just finished their task? Uh, I think it was the boy that was, uh... God, this thing. Yeah. Um, so we gotta bring the 18 wheeler over there. Oh, wait, but you got it filled with sunflowers. Where are you gonna sell those at? Oh, um... Uh, we can go take them to the train station if there's nowhere good to sell them. Because there's another silo over there. We're gonna literally just drop them off in the train station silo and leave them there. It's like another storage. Den Bakery's not bad. 1500? Oh, it's going down though as we speak. Even though it's only one speed? Yeah, it went down to 1499, or as I said, 1500. I'm gonna drop them off at Den you're, Bakery. Yeah, dark. Okay. Yeah, where is. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Oh, we've seen higher, but not as high as the soybeans. So as we're running out of uh, farming simulator to simulate, would you ever play this game again? I mean, sure. A different map, maybe with some mods. 
Yeah, I wonder what I wonder what good mods are out there. Like I wonder wonder how 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 deep you can delve. Yeah, I don't think I'd play it again in vanilla. Um, I mean, I might play it again if we had a server with like fifteen people on it that were mm. all just doing like random things and having a good time and like you could make other missions or something. But yeah, the the vanilla, even though we have a, a mod pack, you know, for the Baylor. It still feels very vanilla and very... It's just very repetitive in what we're doing. Yeah, I agree. So, it's got its positives. It's got its negatives as well. It's a good game to shoot the shit through. Yeah, it's a good podcast game. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize this, the, the bottom of this 18-wheeler trailer has is a conveyor. That's how it pushes the stuff out. It conveys. Oh, I didn't know that either. And I can't see it because here. Yeah. Oh my god, it looks like he's never going to get done with this field. Yeah, no, that field is um, it's a real special thing. Like, Jesus. after we got done playing last time, I just, like, left my computer logged in and went and washed dishes and stuff and came back and he was full. And so I unloaded and then went. I, th I think it takes over an hour, real lifetime, for him to cut that whole field that's it's insanity insanity yeah it's probably not even worth owning that field now that we own it <laughs> just because it makes i mean i guess we at this point we can speed up time right everything's well, well no, this guy's yeah. still planting and i'm just looking at like fields 12 14 15 and 19 and 24 all of them i think they could all fit inside field five yeah more than once yeah yeah i think I think we like quadrupled our farmland by in one field. Yes. Uh, Good lord, it'd be kind of interesting to own everything, but I don't even know how we keep up. With yeah, four, no, with, I don't. I don't with, think there'd be any point. Yeah, with only four workers, I don't think we could keep up. Yeah, we have to increase we, the server somehow to like thirty people playing, and have you know one hundred and twenty workers working on all that stuff. Yeah, it would I'd be like to uh, insane. Um, go on own oh, field nine and like combine field five and nine uh, I, I was going to say it'd be, it'd be funny to plant grass over there it would be so, yeah. funny to plant grass I mean you could just let it grow once and then just bail and like not even worry about multiple growths it would take you hours and hours to bail that field <laughs> yeah I it wouldn't would even want to so long because you can't automate that it's all manual yeah so the problem with this is we don't have another cultivator. So even if we use speed up time and get the other fields grown, we can't pick those fields. We need another cultivator. Yep. <laughs> That's all I got to say is, yep. We need two cultivators for that field. Oh, shit. That's not a terrible idea. Honestly, start them on each on different ends. Yeah. we we. That's exactly what we need is two cultivators in that field. But we need two more cultivators. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. I he's know. Full. Right. God, look how little it doesn't seem like he's done anything in this field. He's no, I'm full. just watching him on the map. Uh, I'm standing in the middle of the field, but watching him on the map, and it's it's crazy. It is. Uh, so that means if he's full there, fields 14, which is our biggest field that we have soybean on, does not fill up. Yeah. The yeah. cultivator. That is insane. Oh, that guy completed his task, so uh, I'm going to speed up the time. Insane. Oh, I guess I am in the middle of, or I'm in this cultivator right now, huh? <laughs> I'm controlling the guy who's controlling nothing. <laughs> uh, 14,000. Doesn't seem like he's done anything. Jeez. Yeah, that this will this field will be more than this eighteen wheeler can hold. That's twenty four percent of it right now. So he's only got like four times. Oh yeah, he's got a great demand for wool at the spinnery. Wool was I what really that means. shitty a little bit ago. Uh, we really want oh, it. We're not going to seventy five, seventy five. I guess it is a decent amount. Oh, no, that's that's high. I think we Do only we have, have two. We have two pallets. 
It's not, yeah, it's not that many. I mean, we had two before because I moved them out of the uh, yellow space. So Yeah, we tanked the market on soybeans, too. Is it really, really bad? <laughs> yeah, it was, what, 2200 whatever we started? And now at Maplefield, it's 1100 well, that must be because we it knows we planted this big field of soybeans. So think of it this way: we're at thirteen. We're already fourteen percent full, and the cultivator is making a, the turnaround from when you unloaded. Which was that like halfway through? <laughs> yeah, it was already halfway through that row. Yeah, it's fourteen percent. So like twenty-eight percent per. Have yeah, less than four four passes, and it's full. feels too big. We made a mistake. <laughs> you should plant potatoes in it. Imagine how long that would take. With the little one row potato <laughs> <Yeah>. harvester. <laughs> oh, God. Let's get that side tractor in new grass. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even want to think about that. That was fantastic, though. We loved it. Honestly, that little field, um, what is it? The one right below us here. Uh, number nine. That would be a good potato field, I think. Yeah, nine. Not, nine would be. I was all about nine uh, from the beginning because I think it'd be like with these cultivators. I'm gonna run over to it. It'd be like just two swipes back and forth. Right. It's taking me so long to get over to field nine. I'm frolicking through the soybeans. <laughs> Like a scene from Wizard of Oz. Get over here. Yeah, it's uh what would it be? I guess it's bigger than it looks. It'd be like three passes, probably. Dude, it's right by the water plant. I'm swimming. Uh, I'm swimming. Is this a sewage drain? I hope not. Oh, God. <laughs> Probably. I'm swimming in shit. Oh, yeah. I feel like Shawshank. <laughs> Yay. Uh, it needs to be raining for me to do that. What is this thing over here? This. What is this building? I'm sure we've looked at it before. Oh, this just must be one of the drop-off points. Oh yeah, it's gold, uh, gold crest Pacific grain. Okay, yeah, I definitely dropped stuff off over here before. Well, I mean, nothing else to do but wait yeah. right now. I was about right? to say, yeah, we might as well go ahead and call this one here and uh, wait. <laughs> All right, uh, folks. Stay tuned. See you. Bye.